This is FFPÖ, your primary source for Austrian film and TV critique, where two minds come together to take apart the work of people who actually matter. Welcome back to a new episode of FFPÖ, my name is Paul and this is the 42nd episode on the recorded on the 16th of May 2017 and we have I, I'm so happy to have him back after a, a longer hiatus I guess than between the first two uh, showing of my fabulous co-host he is back it is Luke Hacker hi Luke thank you for being back man well thank you for asking me back and congratulations on 42 episodes oh yes I am quite pleased with with that number and having you here for the 42nd the, the, my geek's heart is beating strong enough because of that it's a rather special number 42 yeah it is um, <laughs> but it has nothing to do with this movie because the meaning of life in this movie is rather uh, push to the side, I guess. No, this movie is all about death. Yes, exactly. And we watched Come Sweet Death or Come Süßer Tod, a 2000, uh, I guess, thriller? Comedy thriller, thriller? Black, dark, 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 comedy. dark comedy thriller. Yeah. Because um, not so much a who done it as why done it, and yeah. How not even how done it. We know who did it. We know how they did it. Yeah. We just want well, to find we didn't out why. know it about all the murders. No, not all the murders. Yeah. No. We we didn't even know about certain murders until like the last th third of the movie. Like a, a bunch of extra murders showed up. Yes. <laughs> this this is this is rather I think. One of the bloodiest. So, for the audience, uh, we you are our residential Brenner yes, specialist. I've, I've been I've been lucky enough to do. I think this is my third Brenner yes. film. Yes, it is with you, and um, I, I really enjoy them. And this one was oh, no this, exception. This yes, is a, this is a this cracking is a, movie. This is a. I I actually think not because this is the first time I watched this particular one. It's so far my favorite. Really? Yes. Interesting. But I think I'm biased because I was also a civil servant with the Red Cross. Yeah, we should probably explain that this is a film about ambulance men. Yes, yes. So the, it, Brenner is not a detective. He's not a cop. He's just uh, uh, an ambulance driver, basically. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a a former detective who's yes. been thrown out of the police force. Yeah, after banging a colleague's wife. More specifically, having yes. sex with his boss's wife. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> he actually banged up up the ladder, which is never good. You you always should bang on the same ladder, not not one rung be be below or up. That in, because either it's taking advantage or getting taken advantage of, and this way, Paul, you're such a romantic. <laughs> I'm a practical yeah, romantic. You're a practical, practical romantic. <laughs> all, all snakes and ladders. Or I, I love love. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so Brenner is a, a, a yeah an ambulance he, he, driver. He's, a, he's an ambulance driver, and um, for those of and here we are introduced to Bertie, I think, right? Yes, Bertie is his colleague yep. in the ambulance. Well. Bertie is actually the ambulance driver. Yes. Brenner is rides, I don't know what the expression is. Shotgun. Rides shotgun with him. Yeah. Um, almost literally in this film. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the interesting thing about the film is that there are two ambulance services that are in hot competition with yes. each other. Which, which is very much realistic of the uh, of special um, deal that the Austrian government has with for non-profit organizations because the whole Austrian ambulance system is not in government hands but rather they pay uh, non-profit organizations to do that but those non-profit organizations are only non-profit on the outside because you still have bosses who get bonuses you still have management that wants to maximize profit and that's how you get this weird we have excellent ambulance drive drivers but this competition is very gets very weird sometimes um, particularly in this film where these these two ambulance services yes these two alternative which are which are based based on real ones 
which are based on real ones. The Kreuzretter is a, 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 from the Maltesers, basically, and the other one, what was the name? Did you, did you remember the, 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 Rettungs, bad, the bad one? Yeah, the Rettungsbund. Ah, Rettungsbund. Rettungsbund. Yeah, Rettungsbund. Rettungsbund. Yeah, Rettungsbund. Yeah, they're yeah. the, they're the um, alternative service. Yeah, and they behave more like two gangs. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they both have their own Especially, bars and, and yes. places where they drink. Dive bars. Um, yes, dive bars. And um, right, I didn't woe, even see that. Woe betide it if if one gang member goes to another gang's territory. Yes, exactly. So that's the basic setup, and now we're going to move on to our first segment, and that's plots. Basically, Brenner is getting dragged into this whole thing. He doesn't want to be part of it. No, he's a former police detective, as we said. Yeah. And he is asked by the boss of the um, ambulance service, which he works for now, yeah. uh, to investigate how the other ambulance service are managing to get a march on them when it comes to picking up yes patients exactly um, so he is reluctantly dragged into investigating um, <laughs> there is then a murder oh yes right by, um, double murder there is a double murder yeah um, but we know who who did it it's the german yeah <laughs> this being as, an Austri obvi uh, austrian film it was always going to be the german yes as is point pointed out uh, pointed out by brenner himself yes he's, more he's, as a joke i think and then it turns true that he's like yeah the german did it obviously because it's always the german and then it is actually the german which uh, which also has a really awesome name the german's name is gross and he is rather gross because we are introduced to the character by him having a blowjob in one of the dive bars by the daughter of his intermediary boss I guess. Yes, I don't know what, yeah. the, what the father's role was exactly in the hierarchy of ambulance yeah. services, but, um, <laughs> but he's, uh, he's there. And he's there. <laughs> um, anyway, yes. um, the German does a murder, yes. and Brenner gets reluctantly involved in investigating that. Yes, really, exactly, and um, it's a it's a little like a a film noir. It's it's a sort of strange parody of those kind of black and white Humphrey Bogart films. Oh yes, Femme yeah. Fatale comes and yes. asks him to help her out. Yeah, um, but this being a Brenner movie, he's not the slick, suave, um, private eye. Nope, he's in, nope. an incredibly unhealthy, stubborn, stubborn, pig-headed. P people would call him pig-headed. I think. A little bit, yeah. He, his personality traits are in con in complete contrast to a Humphrey Bogart type. Yes, mind you, he does smoke a lot. Yes, um, yeah, that's the one. But <laughs> Humphrey Bogart makes it look cool. He makes it look very unhealthy. He does yes. very unhealthy. Yes, he does. <laughs> like this is an anti-cigarette commercial, basically the whole movie, and an anti-alcohol, like. Um, so they, 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 it's a little bit because the, with all Brenner movies, the, the murder, well, this has the most convoluted because we have several murders on our hands. We have the murder of the, 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 um, the nurse and her boss. Then we have the murders of the, of the old people. And we have the murder of the German. Yeah, we have the murder of the German and the attempted murder on one of the old guard um, that originally came up with this scheme that kickstarted all those murders. That, that's right. I'm yeah. not sure we're really doing justice to the sophistication of this film. No, we are not because this is this is no this is entangled to a degree where it takes an hour and 40 minutes to ch because they start with all the murders already been all nearly all of the murders already happened because only the, the the gross and the old lady get murdered during the movie that's right yeah yes those are the only yeah all the all the other murders already happened and the the, the first murder of the is is already that's right that's, that's like right. minute what five yeah or something like yeah. that yeah so uh they just basically start with 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 the shocking experience and then untangle the web behind it which is quite intric intricate 
And it is, <clears throat> I, I think, perfectly described by Brenner himself when he has those management office supply balls. I don't know what they're called. Those clicky clack things. The clicky clack metal balls, very popular, it seems, in the 80s. I don't know why I said yeah. that. They seem to have been very popular in the 80s. <laughs> well, they, they, uh, they, they showed up in a bunch of movies in mm. the 80s. Mm. Like every cool off. I think they showed up in um, um, Wall Street, I think. The, okay. the movie Wall Street. That would yeah. be an interesting project. Yeah, to find out where all those clicky clack out, balls are. If there's anyone out there that yeah. would like to. Pacific Rim has a clicky clack ball scene in it. Does it really? Yeah. Yeah, like he punches through a building and the hand just stops in front of the clicky clack balls and then pushes one, one ball and he's got, it's, it's a comedy thing. It's a throwaway joke, but it's funny. And here he explains that if you introduce one element into a, a, a one erratic element, then it's fine. The, the system balances itself out. But if you continue to pile murders on it, it gets so erratic and so convoluted that that nobody really knows what's going on anymore. That's right. Yeah. Brenner finds himself investigating a, a level of corruption. Yes. And way over his head. Well, not but what we are way over his head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so all these murders that we've been alluding to. Yeah are really con con connected with the corruption of the ambulance service yes. in particular. The, yes. The man in charge. Of yes, and the, their, their, their will to sacrifice basically any human ethics and, 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 and morals to stay at the top of the ambulance pyramid, basically. Yes. And what they're doing, because I guess in this podcast we do, we do reveal the, the plot, yeah, is that um, the ambulance service is uh, hastening people's death in yes. order to um, a brilliant uh, scheme. Uh, they they make having, them sign. They, they make, make them. them they make them sign sign what uh, the testaments. They make them sign wills. Yes, um, handing over all their worldly possessions to the ambulance service. Exactly. Um, well, the act, that actually done, happens. That actually happens. Like I, the Red I, Cross. I suggest we be very careful what we say. Now. <laughs> this is, I assume, a fiction. <laughs> no, the murders are a fiction, but oh, the right, people we cleared that up. give give the money to the ambulance service actually happened. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. people do donate to the ambulance service. Yeah. Um, and in this in this film, they they're made to donate to the ambulance service, and uh, yeah. they're they're then hastened towards their end by the same yeah. ambulance service. Yeah. So that's the that's the scam that um, yeah. Brenner finds himself investigating and yeah. revealing. Yeah, through the power of hacking, basically. That's that's the big MacGuffin in this in this in this movie. That's the only thing that's not realistic, I think, is the is the floppy disk hacking scheme that's kind of forced in because the lady that he's interested in is also a hacker or they never, she just said computer science. She, she studied computer science yeah. at university. Yeah, and that makes her apparently capable of hacking the... Uh, uh, <laughs> well, traditionally, um, um, ambulance services have horrible security. So Is that right? Yeah. that's the, Like all those British hospitals that got hacked like a week ago? Yeah. Same, same, same thing. Because the hardware is really outdated, and the management is is not really in the business of protecting digital data, but actual organs. They 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 sometimes have really lax security. Yeah. So, but the MacGuffin is a floppy disk that Brenner uses to steal the patient data. Yeah. What he does is he the floppy disk contains the dates of all the patients. Death, and he manages yeah. to use the cor um, cross, cross reference, reference the, yeah. the dates of their deaths with the people that were in charge of the ambulance at the time. Yes, and the means of their death, which yeah. is also similar, and the pattern emerges, which is the final piece in the jigsaw, which means he he makes the, all the connections and works out yeah. the the rather sinister <laughs> plot that's been, that's been unraveling. Going on. Yes, and uh, as it turns out, it it was actually the his own boss that is the real the real villain here his own boss is the yeah is the villain um so although the other the rival ambulance service are, are bad yeah turns out he's working for the people that are equally as as bad yeah 
at, at least by by yeah furthering the deaths of quite a few old ladies basically yeah yes. um and he yeah the, um, is there is there anything else to the plot that we 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 missed out? No, I think we've successfully ruined it. For yes, if you've never yes, seen the film before. Yes, please watch the movie before. <laughs> Do watch the film. Yeah, we're saying that now. <laughs> oh, by the way, retroactive spoiler alert for the last ten minutes. <laughs> well, if you can piece together the plot from our attempted description of it, well done. <laughs> yes. Again, either read the book or watch the movie. It, it, we, we can't do it justice here because that would mean we were we, we are sitting here for two hours, and <laughs> we don't we don't we ain't got no time for that. No. Um, we we um, there's there's this subplot where where um, Berti actually is more interested in detective work than Brenner is, and. Uh, the, he has his moments by shooting himself in the foot. <laughs> so we have a crazy chase. Oh, it all culminates in a crazy chase scene because uh, the old, one of the oldest co workers that was involved in the plot had an accident where the German, a few years before the whole thing started, slipped his screwdriver into the, the other guy's head. And he was faking his recovery, his non-successful recovery. He actually recovered from the accident, but he faked that he wasn't. And yeah, uh, we have a crazy chase scene at the end where where the the the, the boss um, actually tries to get rid of him in a desperate move. That's right. The, yeah, um, there's a there's a chase scene, and because these are ambulance drivers, the chase takes place with. Three ambulances, a police car, yes, and, and a, a car of um, one someone of, else. Uh, he's the he's the the one of the yeah, he's, he's the, the head honcho of the of the the, of the, of the, of the um, uh, of Rettungsbund the of the rival ambulance yes, service. Project. Exactly, yeah. yeah. He's the sleaziest looking one <laughs> of all of the. And believe me, there's some pretty sleazy looking <laughs> people in this film. So to describe him as the sleaziest looking one is. Quite a thing. Yeah, quite an honor. <laughs> no, that 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 actor pulled pulled all the stops to be the the grossest guy in the bunch. Like the the most male characters in this one are horrible human beings. <laughs> like Bert is the only one with who's like I think audience members are are supposed to bond with Berti because he's he's honestly good hearted. But he is kind of stupid. Well, I think Brenner's good-hearted as well. He's he's, he's reluctantly more, good-hearted. He's, good, he's more cynical, perhaps, yes. and, and world-weary, and yeah. um, thump, sort of, uh, worn, worn, worn by life. But, yes, uh, but I think his heart's in the right place. Well, he also does it for for some possibility to to hang out with ladies. So yeah, but he doesn't hide that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 never he's never um, he he goes straight to the point <laughs> in most discussions about sex, and that's that's what one thing that that still still surprises me to a degree that I don't I don't only a book character basically can do, and is have this horrible disdain for himself, but still be able to. Uh, smitten women to smite women no you can't smite women that that's what gods do yeah women um, women are smitten by him yes okay yeah he he yeah um, for he has a he elicits their sympathy yes by being this broken man broken man yeah literally broken in this film yeah physically <laughs> beaten up yes and, and damaged yeah he gets he gets beaten up quite a lot in this movie um yeah, so I've, yeah, I think we butchered it that now completely. I think. <laughs> I think we've beaten the beaten the crap out of the plot there. <laughs> let's move on to let's move on to cinematography because there were there were some really really nice shots in this one. I mm. thought the beginning was cool with the with the with the um, the lights the 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 what's the 
the, the flashing lights, the, the blue ambulance lights. Yes, exactly. And um, and the introduction with the with the coffee, where they sh pour sugar into the coffee and it's come sweet death, which you know was a nice bit of symbolism because it went all the way back to to the end of the movie, where uh, the boss was pouring co uh, sugar into his coffee after he killed that lady by giving them an, too much glucose. Yes, which is literal come sweet death in this case with a diabetic. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that I thought that was pretty brilliantly laid out to have that recurring. Also, um, not a, completely abiding by Chekhov's gun, by introducing the gun relatively in the middle of the movie, then resurfing it, in, resurf letting it, it resurfaces in the last third, and then having Bertie use it only to shoot himself in the foot, which was... <laughs> I honestly just thought he would break the glass. <laughs> so we should probably explain that yes. the end of the film finishes, if you can believe this, with the ambulance crushed into a flower shop. Yeah. By which I mean uh, flowers in Blumen, not yeah. flowers in the thing you make bread with. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Uh, crash <laughs> the, 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 that would have been fun too to have them crash into a flower shop. <laughs> so the ambulance is crushed into a flower shop, and in in the front of the ambulance is the villain. Yeah, the the boss of the ambulance service, and uh, he is trying to kill our hero Brenner. Um, yeah, his romantic interest, um, and the old co-worker, the old Play, co-worker that played by Karl Markovic. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to kill them by effectively gassing them in the back of the yeah. ambulance. Bertie <laughs> tries to rescue them with a gun. Yeah, um, first he tries to uh, to smash the window of the ambulance with the gun and only succeeds in literally shooting himself in the foot. <laughs> which is still which so is funny. Which was kind of a brilliant yeah. release of tension. And <laughs> A real laugh at that yeah, point in the film because it's a life and death situation, and he just shoots himself in the foot. And um, but apparently his his level of, of of adrenaline must have been crazy high because he still manages to get up after that and 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 move to the to the front. He does, and, yeah. and at which point he rescues um, rescues them by doing what. I think we probably expected he would do at yes. the very beginning, yes. which is shooting the villain. Yeah, after he gave him a, a bit of time, he to, did give him a bit of time yeah, yes. to to rethink his situation and everything. But he felt he was like a cornered animal at, animal at that point. Like his life was over. The, the yeah, evidence he was, was out for of yeah. Tort, wasn't he himself? Yeah, for yeah, he wanted sweet release by by gun in this case, his own gun, which is quite poetic too. See, it's it's also a, a testimonial to to not have carrying carrying firearms. Basically, you're gonna get murdered by your own weapon, one way or another. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we had uh, some the one sex scene where the where the the camera was tilting to the left and right because it was like. The waves of the the, the, the the glass thingy that they had in front of them. I, I really like that one. Yeah, there was the. There were two scenes where the camera does that. The yeah. first one was in the bar. Oh, yeah, right. Where um, totally. Reno looks across the bar yeah. at, um, at the. the the barmaid. No, he. Which, which she, yeah, well, she's the daughter. Sorry, of, she's the daughter of the. The old police, uh, the, the old ambulance guy. Yes. Um, anyway, Brenner looks across the bar at him, yeah. and the camera is tilted, and you get this kind of, uh, it gives it a sense of Brenner being slightly drunk, yeah. slightly intoxicated by the, the hormones mm -hmm. and the sexual tension in the room. Yeah. Um, they even say that it, that they even when refer he was, to, yeah. refer to the, the hormones and the sexual yeah. tension in the room. <laughs> Just in case Which, you didn't get the message. And that, that, that room has the opposite attraction to me. <laughs> that, it's that a was one of the, place. It was like that's the Austrian equivalent to a dive bar. 
definitely like fist fights gonna break out in this place somebody's gotta get hurt because you can't be all around this 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 manifestation of sadness and not get angry at some point especially combined with that much alcohol <laughs> and the second yeah wonky camera well not wonky camera work is yeah. the is the love scene between Brenner and um, his, his his true love I think in this yes. film the woman he wanted to end up with but yeah this being a Brenner film he doesn't end up with of course the uh, their their sex scene is filmed through um, I don't know what it was really it was like a, it's a, a fake, lava lamp a lava but, lamp but but it's it's one of those thin uh, framed ones that look like a see through um, window basically and it has is only half filled with that stuff and it it wobbles around basically that's it wobbles around and you see it wobble around and yeah. through the wobbling around you see them wobbling around sort of <laughs> because they're both badly hurt and try to to make it work <laughs> um if anyone out there has finished with the clacky balls counting in film project perhaps you'd like to count the thin lava lamp swirly <coughs> sex scenes sex scenes yes there, there in films there, project i'm sure there are there are quite a few there definitely are, really yeah Probably. <laughs> I can't think of any other, but there, there, there have to be. That's just brilliant filmmaking right there. And um, I thought that the, the, the chase scene was quite intriguing too, from a 2000 standpoint. Yeah. That was, the, that was the, 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 the at the end. Scene. Yeah, the car chase scene at the end. That was quite intense. Why from a 2000 standpoint? Well, because it was before Fast and Furious and all those racing movies came out and redefined how a chase scene should be shot. Like the the coolest thing we had, at that point we had we had was the French Connection basically. And this one does something similar but but on a way tighter budget. <laughs> Like they had three different VW ambulance models in this. Definitely all of them bought like refurbished ones from the lot, basically. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> like they have those look similar, but we don't really give a fuck. <laughs> and yeah, the, the, what else? Was, was there anything else that, that, that intrigued you from a, from a cinematic standpoint? I like the the atmosphere. The the I thought it was very Vien really picked up oh, a certain side of Vienna. So yes, you recognised bits of Vienna. You recognised yeah. the, the Gemeindebau. I think, yes, and then a street again because I was lucky enough to be in that building once. Yeah, and and the, yeah, and the, and the, and on one of the streets where that chase happened, I think you you picked out, and it struck me that yeah. um, these were probably very very specific references with oh yes very um very accurate um they, they they didn't choose those places by accident yes especially uh, for karl markovic's character the gemeindebau is definitely something that tells you something about his backstory because that's mostly where uh working class families live where especially back from the 80s which would line up with his age that he grew up in such a place which would make him make him as an ambulance ambulance driver definitely something that he basically stepped up the social ladder and was actually intrigued in su succeeding in some part so yeah, I think that got, gave him a little bit of backstory that that I quite enjoyed. That was just visual and only for the Viennese, basically, <laughs> because you wouldn't you wouldn't really see the difference between like that building is a high rise building with nice balconies and everything. Like you wouldn't know that this is a Gemeindebau if you if you didn't know any. F yeah, mm. so mm. for the for the outside view, it's just a really nice building. <laughs> They have inside pools there too and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that, and, and a public garden on the top roof and stuff like that. They, they, that was that was at the height of how much stuff can we cram into a ten thousand people building and make it still nice for for all of them. Basically, it was the height of socialist uh, inspired um, project planning. Basically, they're really fucked up on the infrastructure, but the building itself is great. <laughs> Yeah, so um, 
Anything else that, that from a visual standpoint? Okay, let's let's move on to sounds. All right. Um, so uh, we had the beep 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 sound at the beginning that ended in the intro, which I really liked. The 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 the, the pulse sound, and then it stopped and the movie began began. Um, there's a lot of Austrian slurs thrown around and really sloppily translated into English. <laughs> and the music, of course. You pointed out at the beginning oh. that uh, the music was provided by... Sofa Surfers. Sofa Surfers. Yeah. Um, an Austrian band. Yeah. I think we spoke about this last time about the importance of music in these Yes, and I, yes. And they have all distinct sounds, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So this one, the Com Susa Tord... Yeah, was a reference to Bach's St. Matthew's Passion. Yes. Um, so that comes in at the soundtrack at the end as well. Um, and uh, obviously that's a, an amazing piece of music. Yeah. And um, really extraordinary to hear that over this <laughs> black farce, stroke, yes. dark yeah. comedy, really. And it, it created quite a quite a powerful effect really in the end yeah you you really enjoyed that i really enjoyed that yeah, yeah. Um, I, I i noticed that during during the viewing that you and afterward you started whistling it so i was like hey okay he's he's really into that <laughs> i i i yeah again the, the the austrian slur words i really loved their discussion about uh what a homeless person should be called um sandler or uh, uh, Obdachloser, which was like a PC um, thing back then, because Sandler is a slur word basically. Has to Sandler, yeah. So, how how did you pick up on that? Because you are, you spent some time now in Vienna, so oh, I spent some time. In yeah. Vienna. Um, Have you actually was... heard some of those slurs in real life? All the time. No, yeah, people are shouting that, 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 me all, uh, that at me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> du Sandler, and I say, no, no, it's Obdachloser. <laughs> You're trying to defend yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Uh, no, I thought, I, 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 I think it would be interesting to think about this as a really Viennese film, actually. I mean, the idea of yes. death and Vienna is obviously a, a very old one. Yes, and that's like a, forever. Yeah, Since be, Vienna exists, that's that's our main brand is yeah, death. Yeah, you've even got a, um, yeah. a, 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 a funeral museum, I believe. Yes, in Vienna. yes. Yeah, with, but yeah. Vienna has 200 different kinds of museums. We have the highest ratio to population, museums to population in any major city in the world. We have a globe museum. A globe museum? Yeah, just globes. Okay. Yeah. Have you been? Yeah, it's awesome. They have like a, a, a giant globe that fills a whole room. Wow. Yeah, it's insane. And it's like from 1850 or something Would it like be that. Ironic so some of the parts of the world don't exist yet on that map. <laughs> Would it be ironic to get lost in the globe museum <laughs> <laughs> yes i would it, that would be quite ironic yeah 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 that would never happen in the map museum so <laughs> by the law of averages vienna <laughs> also has yeah a funeral museum, museum. yes and um and this idea of having a good death and making a beautiful yes. corpse is yeah seems to be quite a Viennese oh definitely Viennese yeah. thing and 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 you know this film is all about that yeah it's all it, about it, it, it really tries to catch that soul of our nonchalant way of dealing with death we Viennese and I think they transport that quite nicely yeah they do and, and through the way, dialogue and the way corpses and bodies are treated in this film is, <laughs> is interesting not only do you have I mean the very first scene is about the ambulance going to pick up the the crashed a, a car, car driver a car crash victim who, yeah who has unfortunately died and so becomes a donor and so then it becomes yeah. a, a race to get this they now refer to him as donor yeah to the hospital on time um, and throughout so they the film, have fresh organs, you know. Yeah, and throughout the film, people are people's bodies are beaten and twisted, yeah, and mangled and mutilated. Yes, and I think one of my abused and abused. Yeah, 
where we're well, the, I think the, twisted and mangled and mutilated yeah. probably counts as abused yeah. as well. But yeah, but there you are. And, um, <laughs> and I think one of my favourite scenes in the film is the sex scene that we referred to earlier yeah. between Brenner and uh, his true love. Yeah. Um, where she's wearing a cast on her right leg and her left arm, I think, mm-hmm. and he's just been beaten up by the ambulance service. Yeah. Um, leaving his face completely mangled and battered and a yeah. split lip and a bruised eye and, and stitches. And, and yeah, I've, 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 I was like, he should have had some scar scars from that. Like, that's that's really weird. What's what's happening there? Yeah. And they, they end up in bed together. Mm-hmm. You see this awkward and yet tender scene where he's undressing her and taking her blouse off over this... <laughs> over this, the cast, over yeah. cast. And then you hear their their noises which are a mixture of ecstasy and awkwardness yes and pain and pain <laughs> um, especially when he she touches uh, him on the back where where they knocked him over with a plank and he's like no <laughs> <laughs> yeah so there's a high proportion of people in this film that get limbs broken and yes faces mangled oh definitely yeah um something else with the sound or are we done here oh was that sound Yes. We slightly went off off track there, but anyway. Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, okay, let's let's move on to best moments. Um, I, I I think I've already described my two best moments in the film: the sex scene that we just spoke about, yes. and also the scene at the the end with the shooting yourself the, in the foot. Shooting yourself in the foot. That whole scene. Yes. And I think we spoke about this before in the in the other other Brenner films we watched, yeah. where if you just look at that scene in isolation, it's mm-hmm. completely crazy yeah. and implausible. Yeah. This ambulance in a flower shop. The ambulance yeah. <laughs> is being turned into this kind of death uh, trap. Death, literally a, a, a death trap where people are being gassed to death in the back of the ambulance by yeah. the head of the ambulance service. Yeah. Um, also quite ironic. <laughs> yeah. He's um, he's uh, and trying to be rescued by this guy. Um, uh, and, and described like that, it does sound completely implausible and yeah f- far-fetched right but in the context of the film it makes perfect sense and i really enjoyed that about this film and about all these yeah. films actually that you the the the, the in part the, of it in, is seeing how they build that up and it makes complete sense and in at the same universe. time you're going yeah well this is completely crazy it, but <laughs> yet obviously it makes complete sense yes and i think that probably comes from the very kind of the very idea of this film the central idea of that these ambulance men yeah. who are here to rescue you yes. and look after you are actually doing precisely the opposite yeah um, and that, uh, that kind sh- of uh, wolf in sheep's clothing basically kind yeah. of scenario yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yeah, yeah that, those are two brilliant scenes and so that's that's yeah. the last scene that I really liked and then this I, the, the, one, the one we described earlier the love making scene oh yeah that one was, was really good too. where they're um also, the Where build up to it was not, to, yeah. well, was existent, but uh, Brenner nearly has an antagonistical um, love affair to, to himself and like tries to basically cock block himself in a way by saying, nah, he doesn't play games anymore and, and, and he can just take a cab uh, back home. And, <laughs> and I think this is probably the time to mention the narrator because throughout this film there is a, a oh, voiceover, yes. a narrator. Yeah. Um, whether I missed it, but we don't find out who that is. Oh, like, he's the, the guy at the end. Who is it? He's one of the, he's one of the anonymous ambulance drivers, which, which totally feeds into the other guys who describe the scenery up to, uh, in the other two movies. Okay, so one of the anonymous yeah. ambulance drivers is a narrator of the film. Yeah. Um, and so you get this slightly dry wit yes. commenting on all the action. And the comments made about that lovemaking scene is that um, he was unable to seduce the woman when he was whole, yeah. and fit and well. Yeah. Um, but, but when now he he's was, broken. But now he was broken and smashed up and injured. Yeah. He was completely irresistible to... <laughs> Eh, that's how you get the girl. <laughs> Just get up, gang, get 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 angry at the gang, get beaten up, and then show up at the door of, of, of the woman that you love. Well, not only get beaten up, get um, done to you what was described as special treatment by the ambulance service, which involved <laughs> having your head smashed in by a yes. plank and then being injected yeah. uh, with alcohol. Yes. Um, then the ambulance service would 
throw you in the back of an ambulance, yeah. drive you around to their rivals and basically dump you. Yeah. So as I said before, while you're pu- puking, while stupid. you're being sick because yeah. you've been injected with vodka. vodka yeah. Um, also, so as I said before, also Aristov, really, guys, they're, they're, at least get a, something better than than Aristov. Get, get an absolute vodka, something you know, something nice. <laughs> yeah. So they're really behaving like two criminal gangs. Well, they are yeah. two criminal organizations. They are two criminal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, wolves in sheep clothing. Um, and we, uh, f- for me, the best moment is the build-up to this, the over-pissed scene, where where Brenner is in the gangs, uh, in the rival gangs uh, uh, dive bar, um, pissing, and he overhears through, a, I don't know, an air shaft or something like that. He overhears the discussion of the boss with one of the sponsors of 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 the rival gang. And um, he tries to flee from the guys who try to beat him up from the rival gang, and he stumbles into the room basically where they have the discussion. <laughs> that was quite funny, I thought. That was that was like the, yeah, that's that's playing with the expectation that in an American movie he would have just disappeared and be gone for good but no he actually has to suffer the consequences of his stupid actions which are getting beaten up injected with vodka uh, sprayed spray painted trapped in a tub puking and dumped in in your rival's territory basically <laughs> brenner has the instincts of a detective throughout the film yes but the ineptness to, of, an, of a civilian. Well, he has this, <laughs> this, this, this weird combination of he's, a, he's, he's some sort of detective genius and then does something really, really stupid, that being the, yeah. the case in point. So yeah. he overhears this crucial conversation going on between the two yeah. villains. So he sneaks up and eludes the two other villains who are yeah. chasing him in a very Hollywood-esque kind of way. Then he manages to escape from the... He's from, Austrian from his, Ace Ventura, basically. <laughs> he manages to escape from the from the pursuers by walking straight into the yeah um, the clutches of the of the the, the main villains. Ah, so good! And it's a great moment. Well, not the main villain actually. Well, w- the, the uh, main rival villain, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, and he does that again. So he he manages to solve the. The crime, the the first crime he's he's asked to investigate, um, when he's asked who did it, and he says the German. Yeah, <laughs> which is absolutely right, and I think that and racist. A, I think that carries a, a certain uh, weight in Austria. That yes, comment. well of course <laughs> of course the German did it. Yeah, and we know the German did it. Well, with with the instigation of an Austrian, but sure, yeah, the, the Germans did it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Always shifting the blame. That's what we're good at. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, for best moment, I think I think we're 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 um, we're done here. I don't really have a secret category here. You haven't got a secret category. No, not really. I I I, I wanted to How have one. How about nineteen favorite nineteen eighties props? Was it the clanky balls? Or was it the lava lamp? <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. Or was it the floppy disk? All right. <laughs> okay, let's do this. <laughs> Best use of a nineteen eighties prop. Um, is it nineteen eighty prop? Uh, 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 Prop from the last millennium is probably the okay, way to yes. describe it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to do the, the introduction? So yeah. introduce the segment. Best use of a prop from the last millennium. Thank you. Nice. Uh, <laughs> um, I. Uh, yeah, I think I think the the clanky balls are are, are my favorite. I think. I, I, I love the symbolism behind it. I liked how, how, how Brenner used it and the, the other guy basically played dumb because he was the main villain, but Brenner didn't know at that point. He thought so, but he didn't know. And that just made it really, really awesome the way he, he used that. Um, 
But also the 1980s VW yeah. ambulance. The VW, that was what, that's what I was going to Ah, okay, up. yeah. There was the, the whole, you, you referred to them earlier, the whole series of different VW ambulances that were, yeah. that were used. Three generations of ambulance, I think. <laughs> um, last time we, I keep referring back to other films, but there was, you were very careful to point out the difference between the new Beetle and the old Beetle. Yes. Which, a, which was a key thing in the yeah. um, Knochenmann film. Exactly. I think. Yeah. Um, I'm sure... Once they finished the clanky balls research and the lava lab research, <laughs> we can might go also on to, look into yeah. use of VW models in Austrian films. Yeah, that sounds like someone's PhD. I'm sure yes, someone's yes, doing that, a PhD. I, I would love to on, see that. I would that. love to see that. Oh, and I, I guess the phone is not really 1980s. With, with well, you the, pointed out, you pointed boss. out there are some things that would no longer work because yeah. um, <laughs> someone uses a mobile phone, I think, to hit someone over the head and knock yeah, them out. Yeah, Karl Markovic's character gets knocked knocked no. out by 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 a nineteen nineties by a nineteen nineties phone, which were more brick like than the phones we had today. Oh yeah, no. As you just pointed the, out, try and do that with a galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you just smash the screen of the galaxy. That's it. That's about all, all that happens. Like you, you, it would take. You could probably slit somebody's throat with a with an iPhone nowadays, but you can't smash somebody to death with it. That would take way too long. You could probably you could kill a squirrel with it, with it, but that's it. Yeah, if you'd want, if, yeah. Also, you break your phone. With that phone, that still works. It still you know? works, it still yeah. works, yeah. That's a good old Nokia or, or a, a Sony Ericsson from, from back in the days. Or a Siemens. Oh, those, the Siemens phones from the 90s were built like brick shit house. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to kill a squirrel, use a Siemens yeah. phone from the 90s. Definitely, Definitely. Yeah. 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 It's quite an efficient, inefficient way to, to get rid of squirrels. But, but, look, you can't use the phone anymore, so... Might as well. The 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 the, the, the battery is gonna be busted at this point. Definitely, you can you can the other use is paperweight. That's it. That's what you can use those phones nowadays for: killing squirrels, paperweights. The other detail I liked yeah. was the referring to slightly older technology or what dates the film. Yeah, was um, the use of the internet to order food that was explained. So yes. Um, they look up Brenner and his love interest. Yeah. Look up, want to order some take uh, some delivery. Yes. And, and she looks up Akakiko. Such that, a brilliant. Yeah, Akakiko. Yeah, Akakiko, that, which is a brilliant uh, is a chain of uh, yeah. Japanese, or I think yeah, the, yeah it's Japanese. Japanese. It's, Japanese it's, it's, it's not. This is fusion because fusion. they have Thai and they have Thai. They have, they have Korean. Um, they have some some Chinese dishes as well, so it's more Asian. So it still but it started at, it started as a Japanese restaurant chain. Okay. Yeah. Is it Viennese, is it specifically Viennese? Yes, I think other, so. Yes. In other cities as well. No, no. I've only they ever started. Seen it here. They started in Vienna. Okay. Yeah, okay. and it was it I went there a, a few times. They have actually pretty decent food. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I've been there as well. So yeah. I, I recognize that, and I thought, oh, well, but it's a brilliant Viennese. product it's placement. Just little little, but they don't. They end up ordering pizza, don't they? Yeah. But anyway, so she explains. How you can look up things on the internet, like yeah. food menus. Yeah. And get a list of <laughs> list yeah. of places that do deliveries, which yeah. seventeen years ago. And probably was the, the height of technology. Yeah, and probably there was just a phone number, so you yeah, had and still was, had to call them. And Brenner was completely amazed and blown away by this. Yeah. <laughs> um, also the floppy disk. Also the was, floppy disk. Well this this is this is the thing that tells us that she's an internet wizard. Whiz, yeah. And that she has access to this arcane information that no one else can <laughs> know about. Yeah. Um, which gives gives us the comfort that she's got the expertise later on in the film yeah. to solve the crime effectively. Right. Um, but I thought that was a, that was a that was she's a nice quite tip. she's the most competent in the whole movie. She's the most just generally. Yeah. <laughs> she's the most well educated, very well spoken, just way better than Brenner <laughs> in all regards. Basically. Is she German? She she had a German dialect, so I'm yeah. I'm I'm guessing yes, yeah, um, <laughs> which felt weird because they went to they went to the same high school, which yeah, there, there are some Austria uh, some Germans here in Austria. So the I other yeah. very Viennese things I spotted in the film, or okay. very Austrian things, was the phrase "Der Papa wird schon richten." Yeah, the Papa wird schon richten. Which is a Hermann Qualtinger song. Well, yes, I'm, I I presume it's an expression that was yeah. used in in the in that 
50s maybe or anyway it's it's still used it's still used yeah the papa wird schon richten is just like uh, my dad is very powerful and influential and knows the right people in the right places yeah and so and, he's and gonna the, fix everything yeah and yeah then there's the, that quoting a song which satirizes that kind of person who's daddy, yes daddy sorts everything out yeah like the, the first guy hits a guy uh, uh, kills somebody in a like you know road uh, road accident and a vehicular manslaughter thing and he's like yeah what's gonna happen some my pa- my dad is gonna gonna fix it yeah my dad is gonna fix it my dad is gonna fix it um so that that, that yeah. phrase is that phrase is used in the film because the there's reference to the helmut kartinger well or no 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 there's reference to the um the father of the main villain oh yeah the main villain throughout is called junior yes so presumably his father was a powerful and influential man yeah and his um, son was kind of once wanted and, to and it is always in his shadow and in his, yeah in his footsteps um right so that's that struck me as a very reference to that and that was a bit of a <laughs> i i spotted that yeah um yes I was very congratulations very pleased, congratulations. Very, very, very pleased to spot that reference and also um, i bow my head to you yeah, yeah. Uh, um you you when, take over the podcast now all right <laughs> luke is now in charge of ffp i'm i'm retiring as main host. well you'll certainly retire after my second observation which is when um, <laughs> Ooh, which Jesus. was when he says uh, danke für die mitarbeit oh yes which i under, again i understand that's a that was a big phrase from the other harder film uh in in inda in, indian indian didn't yeah it? that was a huge hit uh, and danke für die mitarbeit became a bit of a catchphrase after after that film Danke ganz lieb was definitely from India. Okay. I don't know about the other one. Danke für die Mitarbeit probably too. Yeah, but yeah. Danke ganz lieb was the main thing. Danke ganz lieb. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the passive aggressive way of saying thank you in German and uh, Austrian German. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing they were watching and maybe you can explain this a bit more. Yeah. There was one point where they were watching um Der Kommissar, the black and white right um tv series right i and haven't I, i spotted the tv yeah. show but i didn't know that it was the commissar it was the nice. commissar i i know this because at yeah. the end it said on the credits there ah. it wasn't i didn't recognize it <laughs> um, and and that's a, a a tv program about a detective and in the scene they were watching it was very similar to the situation that brenner was in was in that yeah true been beaten up yeah um, but he was the detective who'd been beaten up and, and he doesn't want to tell and he doesn't want to explain yeah yeah explain um, himself yeah that was a nice parallel that they yeah. found there yeah awesome well it seems to me a very maybe austrian or maybe austrian and german thing to watch these kind of tv shows lots of TV oh shows yes here. yes we have tatort we which have tatort is and we have tatort then we have the 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 d2 we have uh we had uh a, a, the the bavarian one with with uh god damn it what's his name yeah but we 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 have tons of 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 so procedural of, drama of, uh, that's the word yeah. i'm looking for for procedural dramas a real who done it yeah definitely yeah and that and that's why i found that particularly funny when he works out who done it very quickly on, yeah. on in the film by saying well obviously the german, german did it, it. Yeah. and when we were watching the film you did a very austrian thing okay having been brought up i presume on, on watching lots of these who done it you very you could, you're very good at working out who done it by working out who the actor is yes so there was a scene at the beginning where there was a picture yeah of people right. who had just been introduced to yeah and one of the murder victims was standing there next to in this photograph yeah next to another important character and then there was a third character in the film yeah. uh, sorry a third person, person the on fo- the picture fo- yeah and you said ah That's the actor Karl Markovic. Karl Markovic. Yeah. He's going to be important when we see him later on. Yeah. <laughs> so when Brenner walks into Karl Markovic's flat, yeah. in the same way that Brenner went, well, obviously it's the German. Yeah. <laughs> you went, well, that's Karl Markovic. He's going to have an important role in this film. <laughs> this isn't a little. So we paid more attention to oh, that. Oh, I never thought about that. That that actually trained me in that way. But probably yes. Well, probably. Yeah, because I vigorously watched. Uh, um, What's his name? Um, the guy with the cigar and the trench coat. Uh, Columbo. No, Columbo. Columbo. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I love Columbo as a kid. Like I, I watched a ton of Columbo episodes, and that's the same way basically. Columbo was the series where you knew who did it at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, exactly. Wasn't it? And you like had to work this. Out how did it? Yeah. 
exactly. He had to work out how did it arrange yeah, those sure. words into a sentence that yes. makes grammatical sense. But people will understand what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there yep. was one aspect of this film that was a. Um, we knew who did it at the beginning. You're right. We thought. Yeah. And then we realised that there was a bigger plot going on. And oh yeah. A, and a far more sinister, a, a sinister and deeply corrupt world. Aspect yeah. World like world like an iceberg, iceberg basically. basically. The, 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 the friendly ship uh, Brenner crashed into the iceberg and then they sunk down and saw what the underbelly of the iceberg look, looked like, basically. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think we, 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 can, we can move on to final conclusion. So, uh, obviously we both loved this movie. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. How would you rank it uh, towards the other two Brenner movies that we watched? Well, it's been a while since I watched the other two. Yeah. Um, don't know. <laughs> I, I, I can't remember what order I ranked the others in, actually. But this was, yeah. this is, this was a... It's a, a brilliant movie. Brilliant film. And the fact that at the beginning of this podcast we uh, mangled the whole plot and probably, oh, yeah. probably revealed it all to you doesn't matter because you kind of know... Yes. ...what's... What's going, going on? To happen, yeah. What's going, going it's on just the intriguing what what the characters are doing in those situations. It's it's more yeah, that's more intriguing than the the, the, the case itself, I think. And they make they, but still make the the, 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 the the murder mystery intriguing and the way they they go through the different steps and Brenner's personality, which just more hinders his own investigative work than anything else <laughs> and to go back to a question that you asked at the beginning yeah how would you characterize this film yeah. well, i still wouldn't know it's it is very yeah. funny and there are some laugh out loud moments like they fucking kill a dog in minute four I'd about that yeah yeah they they, they kill a dog in, in this an movie. ambulance yes they in, drive in, over a car uh, uh, they, they run over a dog red around the corner where where i lived for like a few years like five five years yeah i, li I lived right around the corner at gaussplatz which also has the only 24 24 hour bakery in vienna so if you want to have baked goods at three in the morning fresh ones you have to go there but you have to dodge the ambulances driving on the pavement yeah <laughs> killing running, killing running dogs, dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, but so it's very funny, yeah. and also it's super dark. It's very dark and quite moving. Yeah, and um, because the the villains the don't really have comedy moments, not the main ones at least. They are stone cold killers. Yeah, yeah. They they they. It's like they live in a in a procedural drama, and Brenner lives like in this twisted world, and those two universes collide, which. Fro that's what throws them off basically is him being looking inept looking really disinterested but behind all that his brain is rattling and working all the time and it's almost like he can't help himself being a detective yes so when he's shown a piece of paper with crucial information yeah oh, you yes. think he's just being an idiot yeah and not really knowing what's going on yeah but then you see in the next moment that he's remembered all that crucial information and he's writing it down. Yeah, that was And so crazy he's, he's cool. got this kind of instinct to be yeah. a detective and solve crime despite his best efforts not to. <laughs> like, like he's fighting his own genetic dis or, or personal disposition. Like he, he doesn't like himself. I think that also feeds into to his self-destructive behavior. But yeah, brilliant film. Watch it. Uh, I think we can close this up now. We can. I, I, should, yeah. I should also say, I just, I just remembered that um, yeah. another brilliant scene took place on the hard shoulder of a, a motorway again. And I think that happened in one of the previous films. Okay. There's always a scene in these films where they end up on the hard shoulder. Waiting hard shoulder. to be um, the, on the, uh, the motorway. Oh, yeah, the, the Sicherheits. Sicherheits. That's uh, right. Streifen, so, yeah. so in this film, um, while they're waiting for another ambulance to come and pick them up, they yeah. end up standing there and I think in, in one of the I can't remember which it was Knochenmann or uh, the yeah. film yeah, yeah that's where standing on a hard shoulder yeah. waiting to be collected the, and that, yeah uh, with the uh, chopped off uh, finger that's, oh, that's right yeah. the chopped off finger that's right um, no limbs lost he does lost. get beaten up in these films doesn't yeah, he yeah no, no limbs lost in this one though no, no limbs lost just a shot foot just 
<laughs> That's the only thing that re oh well okay. guess some 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 scrotum bruising as well where Brenner fights the fat ambulance man and kicks him in the groin. I love the fight scenes in these films because they're, <laughs> they're so, so awkward so awkward and realistic probably yeah um, because then nobody's trained in, 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 in martial arts. Nobody knows kung fu of those of those guys. Even a police officer normally has a gun. So <laughs> yeah. So the fight scenes, people get out of breath and sweaty yeah. and in stupid positions, and it's they're sort of funny and I presume realistic. Yeah, yeah definitely. To to out of shape people fighting definitely you get sweaty breathing and everything and as you said um this is a very much a shows the effects of too much drinking and smoking yeah so brenner's whenever he has to exert himself he d gets out of breath and sweats immediately immediately yeah and uh, that that's very funny as he's trying to push an, um, a gurney the stretcher along through a, a hospital yes. corridor he's sweating and <laughs> looks as about he, as though he's about to have a heart attack himself yeah. <laughs> so close that guy is so close always to a heart attack <laughs> yes um definite recommend um where can people find you plugs plugs um this become my will friend come on, out in uh, like one and a half months so in one and a half months well i, I don't know where i'll be performing in one and a half months. So the yeah. best thing to do is become my friend on Facebook, Luke yes. Hacker. Yeah. Um, and that's where I post. Get over, all over his face. Get, book. Get on my Facebook. Um, yeah, so that's where I post all, all the information about right shows on. I'm doing. Um, and if you do come to show, come up and say hello. Yeah. Uh, come he's, he's very friendly. He's very friendly. Th that's how I get to know you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the Vienna stand-up scene in English is really at the moment there's a lot of yes. really really funny guys performing so mm -hmm. come along support that scene yes and hopefully see you at a show sometime all right uh, on this podcast again i hope we're, we're gonna close up the the, the brenner yeah. is, there, is there more yeah is there there more? two more brilliant yeah <laughs> all right guys uh see you the next time uh bye bye i still don't have a closing words <laughs> <laughs>